Have you ever been a week out from a game and thought, now's a great time to start a new army? No, no, me neither, that'd be stupid. I'm Chris, this is Offbeat Builds, and today I'm going to be showing you how I kitbashed, converted, and painted this Chaos Army to meet a ridiculous self-imposed deadline. When I'm starting a new project, I like to come up with a basic set of rules to help build and paint a coherent looking set of models. I like the idea of an Iron Warrior successor legion that inherits their forefathers' machine-friendly nature, but with the ironic twist that they're slowly corroding away due to the influence of the Immaterium. For my basic Chaos Space Marines, the Mark VI armoured Horus Heresy bodies have been augmented with Chaos Space Marine power packs and shoulder pads to try and keep things looking a bit more 40k. I had these in the bits box, but they're, they're so common they should be available from even the most incompetent of bits retailers. For the techie side of the Legion's aesthetic, I scratch-built scopes and other optical sights for most of the ranged weapons from Styrene Rod, in this case 2mm hex section with various bits of tube and rod to represent the lenses, mounts and adjustment turrets. This kind of thing is, well, it's, it's a bit of a nightmare, especially when you're making 20 of them, but it really does help add to the unique look and feel of an army. This example, Legionnaire got an old Corn Berserker chainsaw, the Lucky Duck, but it did get the chunky rivet treatment to help it fit in with the aesthetic of the rest of the model. All in all, I built 20 standard Chaos Space Marines following this basic outline. To add variety, they've been augmented with Jeweler's Chain, Citadel Skulls and bits that fell off an old Admech sprue. I do need a name for these guys though. Legionnaire Rust? Eh, sounds a bit like a Slayer B-side. If you're thinking, this guy bought Age of Darkness and never did anything with it, well then you're dead right. So the Cataphracty Terminator models got the battle damage treatment before getting hit with a generous peppering of rivets. I got rid of the tabards because tabards are silly, but before I did that I drilled a couple of holes to add in a chain, because Chaos do love them a good chain. This was held in place with the heads of dressmakers pins and coated with thin superglue to stop the thing errantly flopping around between its thighs. Uh, yeah, anyway, I left the arms as is for the combi bolter and power fist toting chap since I was on a deadline and I'd spent hours making lots of little scopes for the rank and file troops like a, you know, like an idiot. To bring some chaos to the cataphracty models, I did literally that chopping up some Chaos Terminator trophy racks that I had in the bits box and gluing them in place in pre-drilled holes in the top of the armour. The, the roof armour? I'm going to go with roof armour. Feels better. Which is exactly why I went for the Reaper autocannon in the squad, again from the Chaos Terminator kit via my bits box. And because of the rule of three, I swapped out the puny cataphracty power sword with an accursed weapon from, well, you, you get the idea. The five Terminators took me to 25 models completed in around 20 hours of work. And if I was a proper YouTuber, I'd be building the tension right now by questioning whether I'd done enough to make it to my deadline. But am I a proper YouTuber? Time for a Demon Prince. One the size of a knight, obviously. This had nothing to do with the fact that I had a spare armager kit and everything to do with my love of demon engines. Now, Davy here is too big and his base is too big, but I don't play against people that care about that sort of thing, so we're all good. After the customary riveting, I decided to add a third leg in the form of chains from the Flail of the Unforgiven from the old Deathwing Knight kit. And the, the irony of using that as groin decoration is, uh, well, it, it exists. As does the head, which I decided needed some mechanical chin tentacles. So I can't believe I wrote that down, but look, there it is in the script. And this. The chintacles are made from flexible copper wire from Zinj Industries, but guitar strings will work just as well here. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, wanna see a magic trick? When it comes to weapons, I dove right back into the old irony box and found the big hammer from the Nemesis Dread Knight. I carved off the Imperial finery and slapped on some rivets. All that was needed to marry this up with the armager arm segments was a piece of 4mm styrene tube to form a wrist. Once the arm was fully set, I replaced the plastic cables that I'd cut to get the pose to work with more of that flexible copper wire from Zinge. For the Demon's Infernal Cannon, I simply grafted the end of the Dread Knight's Incinerator onto the body of the Armature's Auto Cannons, then wrapped the whole affair in Jeweler's Chain to make it more chaosy. The Dark Gods love a good necklace. As the model came together, I was concerned it was a bit on the small side. 
Luckily, I found this Iron Jaws banner pole to slap on the top of the carapace. Not only does it make an already oversized model half as tall again, it also brings some much needed goat head to the party. Now, I'm, I'm quite pleased with this model. It's got its own, dare I say, unique feel, and it's just about stupid enough to upset the purists. Perfect. Back to the heresy, and it's time for a Contemptor-based Hellbrute. The official model is, uh, well, it's not my favorite. So I thought, why not entrap a Champion of Chaos in a much classier mobile too? That's, that's not rhetorical, so while you're answering that one, here's some rivets. Last year, I made an Orc Warboss from an old Demon Prince model, obviously, which meant I had this demonic withered hand thing lying around, which fits rather nicely into the Contemptor close combat weapon arm. I tidied the mess up with some sprue goo, which is something I'm bored of explaining, so have some text to enjoy while I'm getting some more rivets done. The rest of the model went together as you'd imagine. Torso, arms, novelty oversized death cannons, and pointy finger of doom. On top of that, literally, I added some more of the Chaos Terminator trophy racks and uh, called it a day. A nice simple conversion that I think looks pretty effective, and all from the pile of shame. Look, I, I better stop congratulating myself because at this point I only had some days to go. Last on the chopping block is a Master of Executions, which is almost insultingly easy to convert from one of the Praetor models. Slap on some Chaos shoulder pads, a backpack and a head. I chose a helmeted head because I prefer my execution as anonymous, and Horace is your mother's brother. I did say it was almost insultingly easy. Looks the part, though. With the main builds complete, there was still one step to go to finish the Rusty Boys. The Rust. Most of this would be done with paint, but I used some Vallejo terrain paste to add some heavy corrosion to some of the innermost parts of the model. Now, it looks absolutely terrible at this stage, but you have to trust the process. Oh god, it's time for... Obviously, these rusty fellas are going to have a lot of brownie-orange tones going on in the palette, so I gave the old colour wheel a spin, and it turns out turquoise is the way to go for the armour. I played around with a couple of test models and came up with a scheme that would take around 40 minutes per model to paint, which uh, was doable. A couple of the steps did use the airbrush, but really, it wouldn't have taken much longer with a normal brush. The key to the scheme is the Croxagore Scales Contrast Base Coat, followed by an all-over oil wash of Thalo Blue. This provides deep, rich shadows that pull in the recesses far better than acrylic paint, which means you can apply it a lot quicker without fear of messing things up. And if you do, you can always pull it back with a little bit of white spirit. Oil and enamel paints are just, they're just a godsend for speed painting. This is a truth fact. Next up, I gave everything a dry brush of Vallejo Sky Blue to give a subtle highlight, and honestly, I'm really happy with the depth of colour on these models, especially given that I managed to get to this stage on all of the models in under two hours. Anyway, the rust started out with a base coat of Vallejo English Uniform, but any mid-brown will do. The hard work gets done with a coat of dirty down rust. You paint this on and it sort of develops into a textured, super matte, rusty finish. No talent required. I gave the rust patches a dry brush of gunmetal to add a bit of metallic highlight anywhere I thought there might be some wear, before turning my attention to any power weapons. These were repainted white and hit with a single coat of striking scorpion green contrast paint. I knew I wouldn't have time to do anything fancy with these, so contrast is a lifesaver for creating some tonal variation. At this stage, I had super bold, clean armor and incredibly dull matte rust. So to tie everything together, I applied a coat of AK Interactive Streaking Grime over literally everything. Once it was touched dry, I went back in with various Q-tips, sponges and brushes loaded with white spirit to pull it back, which leaves a subtle coat in all of the recesses. This quick and dirty approach to weathering really does help pull the various parts of the paint job together. And that's basically it, save for the bases, which I went for a nice neutral grey so as not to overpower what is a surprisingly colourful looking Chaos Space Marine Army. So then, did I finish in time to make my game? Yeah, of course, but the game did get called off. But that's not really the point. Stupid YouTube against the clock stuff is it's just that, stupid. There's value in the techniques and maybe even inspiration, but really, all that we're confirming here is the power of deadlines. 
which is way too bleak to end on. So um, help me come up with a name for this rusty legion. Best suggestion in the comments wins uh, my eternal soul. <laughs>